Oh, hello. Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, where am I? Oh, yeah. It's our new van. This over here is Silver Freedom, our new duo, now called Dolphin SL Van. So I'm going to do a quick spin around here and see if it can So let me step back a bit so you can actually see it. Silver Freedom, right there, and I'm glad you can hear me. Welcome everyone. I'm not sure how well chat's going to work, but we shall see. Uh, if you can chat and put questions in, great. If not, we will do without. So it's a Ford Transit, as everyone should know. On the do We have these, I don't know if you can see them very well, Reflectix things to keep everything cooler with the Reflectix, and it does make a huge difference. Coming over here, we see the smart plug. I was actually charging with a uh, 15 amp household current. So, and it actually worked quite well. I've got a watchdog and it was blocking everything. And uh, if the current wasn't doing well, and then once everything got better, it would let it charge again and I'm almost at a hundred percent again. It's amazing how quickly it can do this. Anyway, there's our storage. Uh, keep in mind pet bedding. So right back here we can store things. That's our zero G hose. That's our clear 2O water filters. Work wonderfully well. Over here we've got the netting for mosquito netting, that kind of stuff. Uh, we like I said, we have the um, the watchdog, and it will just cut the power to the van if there's any kind of voltage fluctuation. Uh, the error code is E1, and it's actually uh, line voltage error, which means it's fluctuating a little too much. Okay. Our house, and one of our plugs had a much uh, more serious. Uh, error code, it was E7, which is missing ground. So one of our plugs actually was not grounded correctly. You had to go to a different plug and it was fine and it charged and everything was great. Uh, so this is the back, the rear view, uh, big doors, everything's wonderful. This is the bed area, which you'll see more later. These down here, these little yellow switches, those are actually our 920 amp hour uh, master volt batteries. If I have an issue, uh, you can press a button in the front to turn them off, or I can take these yellow uh, switches here, flip them over, and it will turn the batteries off. I don't really see why I would need to at this point, but it's there. And to turn them back on, you do have to come back to the battery side back here. You can't turn it on from a button. So uh, you would flip those yellows back to the position they're in now and press a button on the top and that locks it in and then the battery should be back on again. So uh, these are the blackout, uh, what do they call it? Blackout curtains, blackout sheets, whatever. You notice the magnets kind of go on and off with the wind. The jury is still out on these blackout sheets, whether or not I like them. Uh, I think they need stronger magnets, personally. And, you know, we are short people, so I actually have to step up on this thing so I can reach the top to put the magnets in. So something a little more solid that would fold easily would be better, but uh, I don't know. We'll work on that. We'll see how that goes. If you missed it before, there's some more Reflectix. And that is just keeping the interior much cooler. I would definitely recommend Reflectix for the windows, if you, especially for the windows you're not using. 
So let's talk a little bit about the AC and what happened. Let's see if I can flip this back to me. All right, so when we first picked up the van, ooh, oh, I'm old, there we go. Uh, when we first picked up the van, uh, my wife had the genius idea, and it was actually a very good idea, to actually camp over at Willow Shores. And uh, Willow Shores is the camping area that we have the big embassy meetup in June every year. So we did that. So the first night we were actually at embassy, but then we had two nights that we spent at Willow Shores. The first night, the air conditioning was okay. And it, it wasn't really blowing as well as we'd like. We thought, well, it's not quite as cold, but it's, it's okay. Um, so we're wondering about that, and the issue with that was, and I can show it to you later, under the bed there are some vents and, um, I don't know, vents and things that need to be kind of unblocked. If they get blocked, it can freeze up the AC system and it won't cool very efficiently. So that was one of the issues. The other issue was uh, whoever puts in their Freon was having an issue with their machine that puts the Freon in and was reading the thing as full when it really wasn't. And I don't know what the units are called, but we apparently had two units or whatever that is of Freon, and you're supposed to have 2.5 or something. So we were a little low. So we thought that was gonna be the issue. And it did cool down a lot more after we did that. And it was great uh, for the back. The front would always be pretty hot. So if you remember, there are basically a couple of different sections in the Duo, in the Dolphin SL, which is different from the Traveler Dolphin S. The Dolphin S, you can see all the way to the back. The bathroom's in the back, and you can see all the rest of it, so it's pretty easy airflow. With the Duo, you have a back room, which is your bed, you have a kitchen area, a bathroom area, and then a front area that has the sofa. So there's kind of walls that block things, that block airflow. So it was harder to cool the front, and so we'd be getting cool air in the back, and it just couldn't compete with the front. Part of that was we didn't have Reflectix up, so the cabs get very hot. It actually hit 100 degrees one of the days, and that's hot for a van to be able to, to fight. So the Reflectix, we put that up, and that helped the heat a huge amount in the front. But we weren't get, still weren't getting a lot of great airflow, and... and so we just kind of offhand mentioned it to Terry, and he kept thinking about it, going, well, we've unblocked this, we've checked this, we've checked the three on, oh, you didn't have that, that's probably it. But the more he thought about it, the more, because the way I described it is we weren't getting a lot of airflow in the front. And he had mentioned that people put in these, like, battery-operated fans or whatever just to help airflow, and I thought, eh, you know, I spent a lot of money, I don't want to buy a battery-operated fan. And he kept thinking about it, and he realized... What you have here is, you'll see the, oh wait, I have to flip it over. So you see the TV up there, and you have a wall. Well, he realized that could actually, he didn't need to add extra ductwork to add an extra vent for the front, which is what he did. So right there is an extra vent to allow cold air from the air conditioner to come out to the front. That was not there before. It was a wall, just like the rest of this area is. That was a wall. And he did that all in one morning on Friday, the day we were going to be probably leaving. So basically from 7.30 in the morning, and we left Embassy about 10 a.m. And he was able to put all of that in. He didn't have to get rid of shelves, didn't have to do any of that. And it's made a huge difference. It actually cools the front, you know, gives a lot of air flow, you know. So that's good. So, the performance of the split AC is actually really great. The actual AC you know, on the outside, it's under the van, but that's where most of the noise would be, and it's not horribly bad noise. I'm, I'm trying to get a good decibel reading of it to see what the difference in noise is. Inside, uh, what you would have is the, the vents that actually blow the air. You do hear those, um, but I don't think it's appreciably bad, so... Uh, but I think the split AC system works very well. It does cool down, so I'm happy with that. Um, so to answer the question of the AC, it's good. I like it. Good airflow. It does make a difference. Um, if it's if you've been away from the van and it's hot inside, you can run the engine and run the Ford AC for a while so it can get a lot more air inside here for a while, and then you can turn the engine off and just use the AC from the 
uh, from the van itself. Mm -hmm. 